Well, meanwhile, stocks are higher today as bond yields calm down and investors hear from the nation's top two economic officials, Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, for a second day of testimony. Join me now is the president of Kalkbaum Capital Management, Mr. Gary Kalkbaum, and the CEO of Ladenburg Thalman Asset Management, Phil Lancato. Good to see you both. Uh, Gary, first to you, uh, you know, the market is still kind of uh, rolling as far as expectations of the, the end of the lockdowns worldwide and, and the economy bursting back into action, globally speaking. But there are a lot of questions about inflation. And frankly, Janet, ne neither Janet Yellen uh, nor Mr. Powell have done much to assuage the fears of investors on whether they can control it. Well, they both tell us they have tools, but they don't tell us what the tools are because the fact of the matter is they don't have any tools. And I say it all the time, if inflation wants to go to 5 to 10 percent, there is nothing they can do about it. If deflation wants to rear its ugly head, there's nothing they can do about it. I think they have shot everything they can shot, shoot with massive debt deficits and money printing and taking rates down to zero. I think the only things that is left is what they do in Japan, and that's yield curve. And that means buy the living heck out of the 10-year to try to take it down. Yeah. But that will only incite inflation even more. So sure. I worry they put themselves in a box longer term with everything I just stated, and I keep my fingers crossed I am completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, what you suggested, the, the scenario you suggested, is essentially monetizing the debt. And that, ha yep. that has a historical uh, failure rate that's pretty close to 100 percent. Phil. When I heard Democrat Larry Summers, the former uh, Treasury Secretary under Bill Clinton, say, and I'm quoting him now, that Bidenomics is the least responsible fiscal policy in 40 years, I took note, and I think the markets did as well, uh, they're even having some trouble convincing Democrats to come on board with this. Well, you, you've gotten to a point where you've disregarded completely the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic and the economy can only handle so much pressure. So by putting a 1.9 trillion stimulus out there without a plan to pay for it, expecting the Fed to be able to stay put as rates grind higher, and I think there's a limit to that, but still they're going to go higher regardless of what the Fed wants to try and do. And then think about $3 trillion more with a tax bill on top of it. That's asking a lot of a, of a really tough situation that we're in right now. And for that reason, I think they're looking far too down the road here to, to what might be of the U.S. economy rather than what is. And that can be very problematic for where we are with rates and what the Fed can or cannot do. Well, the other problematic thing, uh, Gary, of course, is how you pay for all this. And, and taxes are going to go up. We knew that. Uh, when he was running for president, uh, Joe Biden told us that. But there, there was a billboard. I, and I, I, I hope we have the uh, the picture of it in in Times Square. A billboard put up uh, by a group of entrepreneurs saying, "Hell no, uh, you're not going to raise our taxes on on our watch." These are small business people. Uh, of course, millions of small companies face a tax increase if they if they do increase uh, the personal income tax to the extent that they're going to do, because a lot of these companies take their profits as personal income and report them as, the, as such. So, I mean, we are small businesses of just beginning to see get their head above the waterline here as, as the lockdowns end. And then to get hit with a with a higher taxes, it could kill quite a few of them. Uh, just as you're coming out of pandemic, and let me be clear as I can be on this. This isn't a war on the already wealthy. It's a war on anybody wanting to become wealthy. It is a war on upward mobility. Imagine you start out out of college, you work your tail off, you become successful, and you move up the ladder. What do you got? You got Joe Biden with a machete in his hand, cutting you off at the knees, preventing you from becoming wealthier. And I must tell you, I always keep this little sheet of paper here. It is the 1975 tax schedule, 24 tax rates, 70% uh, yeah. you had to pay above yeah. 100,000 as an individual. We're heading that way. Some of the numbers I'm hearing from Biden, I cannot believe they're even going there. This yeah. extra 12.4% Social Security tax, if you're a self-employed person in New York City making above 200,000, I know they say 400, but it's 200, you're going to be in the 60s. That means you're working into the month of August before you keep your first dime. Mm. Complete insanity will crush the economy, and I hope cooler heads prevail, but I am not hopeful All right, right now. Phil, we only got about 20 
20 seconds, but then you have the corporate rate. The average, world average corporate rate is, is at about 24, 23%, maybe 24. Uh, he wants to go up to 28. Will that send the corporations packing going back to places like Ireland where the corporate rate is so much lower? Without a doubt, the dollars are going to go where they can make the most money. We got to this low unemployment rate because of the effort put in by the prior administration. Call it what it is. If we go back to where we were with higher rates than the rest of the world, we'll lose money. More importantly, you'll lose jobs. That desire jobs. to get people back into the unemployment, from the unemployment market jobs, back into jobs, work jobs. will wither away. If they do this, they cannot do this at a time when we yeah. need jobs more than ever. I heard Gary. Jobs, jobs, jobs. You're both exactly right on that. Gary and Phil, great to see you both. Thank you very much.